uh, in this video we will look at linear recursion in a bit more depth I will describe what I mean by linear recursion. We have uh, mentioned earlier that when designing recursive programs uh, think about the problem in recursive terms do not think in terms of the stack that is used in execution. When it is actually executed there will be a stack created and used for the execution and the depth of recursion is a term which means the maximum size of the stack while you execute the program on a given input. The memory used by the programs includes the local memory of the function uh, plus the depth of the stack. So, let us look at linear recursion in a bit more detail by linear recursion I mean problems which can be solved by calling an instance of the sub problem okay. exactly one instance of some sub problem. We will see more general kinds in later videos. Let us look at an example that we have seen before which is reversing an array in place. So, we had to reverse an array A with n elements and it is supposed to reverse the values contained in the first n indices of A that is A0 is exchanged with A n minus 1, A1 is exchanged with A n minus 2 and so on. So, we have to do n upon 2 exchanges approximately. So, let us look at the problem recursively we had earlier solved it using loops. Now, the basic idea of the recursive solution to in place reversal is the following if n is a 0 or 1 if the array is either empty or it contains exactly one element then we do not need to do anything to reverse the array. Otherwise it contains at least two elements in this case uh, exchange a 0 with a n minus 1 that will be the first layer. Now call the sub problem we have to solve one more sub problem which is reverse on an array which is from a 1 through a n minus 2 notice that we had already solved the problem of swapping a 0 and a n minus 1. So, earlier we had seen a program which uh, involved linear recursion which just went left to right ok. Uh, in the case of reversal of an array it is still linear recursion in the sense that there is only one call to a sub problem, but the way in which you call the sub problem is slightly different. Let us see with an example we will consider actually two examples one for an even length array and another for an odd length array. Let us say that A is an even length array with six elements and we want to reverse it using the function reverse A 6 and we have to do it in a recursive way. So, what you do is first swap A 0 with A 5 and now what is the sub problem left to be solved we have to solve reverse of this intermediate array which starts from A 1 and contains four elements. Okay. So, we have to reverse the array which starts from A plus 1 and there is uh, there are four elements to be reversed. So, in one step uh, even though we have only a single call to a sub problem we have actually reduced the size by 2 ok and now use a reverse um, or rather swap A n A 1 and A 4 and now the sub problem that remains is to reverse this sub array which is a plus 3 and you have two elements to reverse ok. So, you do this and at this point you have a sub array uh, which starts at a plus 3 and uh, has 0 elements to reverse at this point there is nothing left ok. Now, for an odd length array let us take a very small array which contains three elements and we have to reverse it what you do is you reverse uh, you swap B 0 with B 2 at this point uh, you have a sub problem which has exactly one element and you do not need to reverse that array that array is its own reverse. So, the problem just stops there. So, notice the difference between the even length array and the odd length array in the case of an even length array. Uh, the step just before the last step involved an array of size 2 
and you still had to reverse that array. In the case of an odd length array, this, uh, the last step involves a single length array, uh, which is its own reverse, so you do not have to do anything. So, there are two base cases to worry about. One is where the subarray is of size 0 and another is where the subarray is of size 1. Uh, 0 corresponds to even length arrays and 1 corresponds to odd length arrays. Let us write this code now. Okay. So, we have um, reverse A uh, containing n elements and we have return type void, which means that this function is not going to return you a value, but it is going to do something. Okay. So, if n equal to 0 or n equal to 1 return, because in that case A is its own reverse. Otherwise, you swap uh, the first element with the last element, um, that is this operation A and A plus n minus 1. So, notice that swap is a function that takes two pointers uh, to int and exchanges them. Once you do that, you call the sub problem, which is reverse a plus 1 n minus 2. Notice that unlike the previous examples we have discussed, the sub problem reduces by 2 in size. Even though you have only a single call, um, the sub problem is not of size n minus 1, it is of size n minus 2. So, look at the uh, case of the odd length array and the even length array that we have seen before. And uh, we, you can notice that the sub problem reduces by 2 in size for every step. Now, what is the depth of the stack? Uh, you know that roughly n upon 2 calls will be done, um, because you start at a size n, the next call will be of size n minus 2 and so on until you hit either 1 or 0. So, you can work out that there are there will be about n upon 2 steps before you reach 1 or 0. The accurate expression is ceiling of the function, uh, ceiling of the expression n upon 2 plus 1. So, many calls will be there before you hit 1 or 0. So, each function call uh, will take let us say constant amount of space and there are, there are about n upon 2 function calls. So, the stack depth is n upon 2 and therefore, the whole space which is stack, stack depth times the number of variables at each function that will be about n upon 2. So, now let us consider a third example which is uh, computing the size, uh, the maximum of a particular array. For concreteness, let us consider an uh, integer array and we have to compute the following function int max array. Uh, it takes two arguments, one is the array itself and the second is n, which is the number of elements in the array. Again, let us think about the problem recursively. We have written loops to solve the problem earlier, but now let us think about it in a recursive manner. Uh, if the array contains 0 elements, then what is the maximum? Okay. So, here uh, it may be slightly counterintuitive if you are seeing this for the first time. Um, the maximum of an empty array is some large negative value. Think of it as minus infinity. Why do we do this? This is because let us take maximum of let us take a concrete example 1, 2, 3. Okay. We know that the maximum of this array is uh, 3. Okay. Now, what happens when you take a larger array, a, a larger um, array or list of numbers? So, what happens if you take, uh, let us keep this unspecified, okay, A is an int. Uh, you know that if A is less than 3, then uh, the maximum of this array is going to be 3. If A is uh, greater than 3, then uh, the maximum of this, uh, the second one is going to be greater than that. Okay. So, in any case, whatever be the nature of A, you can always say that 
maximum of 1 2 3 a is going to be greater than or equal to the maximum of 1 2 3. Uh, now, what that means is that if you take a larger set, its maximum is always going to be greater than or equal to the maximum of a subset. Okay. This is uh, note that this is independent of A, because you can analyze by cases if A is less than or equal to 3, then this maximum will be 3 itself and 3 is greater than or equal to 3. If A is greater than 3, then this maximum is strictly greater than the previous maximum. Okay. So, maximum is always monotone in um, the according to the subset relation. Now, this means that what will be the maximum of the empty set? Okay. The empty set is a subset of every set, right. So, no matter which uh, s I pick, maximum s has to be greater than or equal to maximum of the empty set. This means that a reasonable value for maximum of empty set is minus infinity. Okay. So, we set, so this is a reasonable convention. That is why uh, when n is of size 0, we return some really large negative value, okay. by which I mean uh, the absolute value of the number is really big, because we are trying to say that it is essentially minus infinity. If n is of size 1, then uh, you just return a of 0, because the array contains only one element, its maximum will be uh, a 0. If n has size at least 2, okay, now we are in business, we have to solve uh, the problem in terms of a sub problem. So, here was an example where the base case had to be really thought of, but now we are at the case where we are at, uh, thinking about the recursion. So, what is the recursive step here? So, let us take a concrete array. Uh, we have array A, which contains the numbers 2, 4, 3, 7, 5, 23, minus 3 and 9, some concrete array. And we want to say that, I, uh, I want to calculate the maximum of the array A in terms of some sub problem. The natural sub problem that we can think of is uh, the sub problem of finding the maximum of this sub array, which starts from a 1 and goes on until the last element. Okay. So, the recursive uh, call should be something like max array a plus 1 and there are n minus 1 elements in it, because we omit the first element. Now, maximum value, how can we uh, solve the whole problem in terms of the sub problem? Suppose we know what is the maximum value in the tail. Okay, a plus 1 to uh, containing n, n minus 1 elements. The maximum of the whole array will be the greater of the two numbers, which two numbers? The maximum of this sub array and a 0. Okay. So, maximum value is the larger of a 0 and the maximum of the tail sub array, which is a plus 1 to a plus n minus 1. Now, in order to compute the sub problem, we ca call a, a recursive call to the same function. It looks for the max array from a plus 1 containing n minus 1 elements. Okay. So, in this example, uh, the maximum of the tail sub array will be 23. Okay. And let us say that a 0 is 25. Uh, so, the maximum of the whole array will be the greater of the two numbers. 25 and 23. Okay. So, in this case, the maximum value will be 25, which is a 0. So, now let us write this code. Okay. So, the, uh, the recursive function is very simple and this is one of the reasons why uh, people like to write recursive functions, because uh, from a recursive function, it is very clear what the function is going to do. Usually, recursive functions are shorter than their loop versions and uh, it is they are easier to understand when you read someone else's code. 
So, let us solve uh, max array using a recursive function in C. We have int max array, because it is finally, going to return an int value, which is the greatest value in the array. Now, you have an int array A, and n is the size of the array. Let us say that we set uh, some max val, uh, if n is 0, then the maximum is simply something like minus infinity. Let us keep it at a very large number, minus uh, 999, uh, 99, so minus 59, some large value, it does not matter. Um, so and then, uh, if n minus 1, if n is equal to 1, then the array contains only one element, and therefore, it is the maximum. Okay, so, you just return a of 0. Otherwise, n is at least 2. So, in this case, you say that um, the maximum value of the sub problem is max array a plus 1 n minus 1. So, this is the maximum of the tail array. Now, once you have the maximum of the tail array, the maximum of the whole array is the greater of the two numbers, which is a 0 and max val. Okay. So, we return max of a 0 comma max val. Now, max is a function that is already there in the standard math library in C, but if you want to write it, it is a it is not a difficult function to write. It, you can take two integers and return the greater of the two integers. Now, we can think about is it better than the loop version of the program. Uh, the advantage of the recursive program is that it is easier and in some sense it contains fewer number of lines than the loop program. Uh, the more uh, the, the, the disadvantage is that it takes up more space while executing. Okay. So, the questions uh, are how much time does the function take? how much space does the function take. And there is also a, so these are things which are concrete and can be measured. There is also a softer question, which is uh, how easy is it for a programmer to look at this function and understand what it does. In the second criterion, it is the recursive function that scores. In the first criterion, it is often the iterative function, the loop function that scores. So, please think about these questions. And um, you can work through it and say that uh, in order to solve max array of an array of size n, let us take an array of size 8, you will see that these are the recursive calls it will make a plus 1 7, a plus 2 6, so on up to a plus 7 1. And when you hit uh, an array of size 1, you get to one of the base cases, which is that when you have an array which contains a single element, the maximum is the only element in the array. So, once you hit here, you will start returning. So, the maximum depth of function calls in this will be um, the size of the array. So, you can say that stack depth is n. Okay. Now, recursive programs are general programs, just like loop, loop programs are general programs. Um, you have written loops even before you saw what are arrays in C. Similarly, you can write recursive programs which deal with general data, not just array data. And in all of these questions, you can ask the question, uh, you can ask the following questions, how much time does the function take and how much space does the function take. Okay. We will see uh, an example for a recursive function that will read n numbers and returns their maximum. Before we came to know of C, uh, C arrays, this is the kind of loop functions that we used to write. Uh, we would take n numbers. Uh, so, first you will read how many numbers to read, uh, then you will read exactly those many numbers and find their maximum using a loop. Now, let us try to do that using recursion. We are not going to use any arrays. Okay. So, what we have to do is write a function read max. It takes n elements and the logic is the same as finding the maximum of an array, but we will do it without using arrays. How do you do this? If 
you have 0 numbers to read then you return minus infinity or some approximation some large negative value. Otherwise you read the first number if n is equal to 1 that is we had to read only one number then you just say that x is the maximum. Otherwise n is greater than or equal to 2 and we have read one number. So you say that return the maximum of the two values which is x okay. and what goes inside? Inside you have to solve a sub problem which is the sub problem of reading n minus 1 numbers and returning their maximum. Um, go back and compare the program with finding the array maximum and the recursion works exactly in the same way. So we will read n minus 1 numbers and return the maximum of those and then you compare maximum of the first number and the maximum of the sub problem. This is exactly as before except that we did not use any arrays. And how do you call this function? You just declare a main function with n. Uh, you scan of how many numbers to read and uh, call the function read max n. Finally, it will return the maximum of the n numbers read and you just print that value. Okay. So, think about this for a minute and see why we did not need to use arrays. Now there are other functions uh, which are typically written in a recursive manner. Uh, we just saw that you can use recursion with arrays. We, we saw problems where you do not need to use arrays, but you can still write a recursive routine. Now we will come to arithmetic functions and many arithmetic functions are often recursively defined. For example, let us take the GCD function Euclid's algorithm. And you can write the GCD function as uh, follows. Uh, you first ensure that A is uh, greater than or equal to B using the swap function. And then you just call GCD of A comma B. And GCD of A comma B is defined recursively as follows. If B is 0, then GCD of A comma B is A. If G uh, if b is non-zero, then you just return GCD of b comma a modulo b. Okay, so this is how you uh, write the recursive GCD routine. And I will make the claim that this routine is cleaner than the iterative routine. In the iterative routine, uh, remember we had to use an intermediate variable, which will store uh, the value of, let's say, a and then did a careful three way exchange in order to accomplish uh, b comma a, a modulo b. Here the code is very simple if b is 0 then we know that gcd of a comma b is a if b is non zero then we know that gcd of a comma b is gcd of b comma a modulo b. So it is a very uh, concise way of writing the function. Now, which you can ask the question which is better is it the recursive formulation or the iterative formulation. Logic is the same, so it will take the same number of steps. So, the time taken will roughly be the same um, and we have also made the claim that uh, the recursive version is easier to understand. The disadvantage may be the following um, that the recursive function may use a very deep stack. So, you can ask a question like how deep will be the stack in the case of the recursive program. So, in the following video we will talk about more general kinds of recursion. In this uh, video and the previous video we have seen recursive problems which can be solved by one call to a sub problem okay. and we will see more general kinds of recursion.